Revelation 12, 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. We are they. Right. Hello, my name is Jay Sadison. I am a year-long Adventist. I came into the church April 28th of 2018, and I am now a student at Washita Hills Bible College in Amity, Arkansas, not to be confused with Washita Baptist. And um, so, just to start off a little bit about myself, I, Jace Addison, am a wicked, wicked man. And the man that you see here today is only Christ living through me. I pray that Jace is not found here today. And yeah, this is my testimony. I hope you are edified by it. We're going to continue listening to Jace's story in just a moment, but first, I want to explain a few things. Hi, I'm David Preisner. I'm going to be your host for this program, A Testimony. A testimony in a court of law are those things that are given in an account of what one personally experienced as it relates to the case at hand. For a Christian, their testimony is how God worked in their life. Many times when relating one's testimony, it follows the order of what life was like before giving their life to God, how they met God, and what life was like and how it is different with God. These stories are raw, sometimes emotional, but it is their real life story. You may not agree with some of the things they say, but I just want to encourage you. Rejoice with them that God has brought them this far and understand and know that God is continuously developing our own stories and our own testimony. And now, let's go listen to more of Jace's story. So, when I was young, I, uh, I was born and raised in this small town, Heiko, Texas, and I was raised on a farm with my grandparents, Rachel and Raymond Addison, and I had a really beautiful childhood for the first five years. Really just, it was anything a kid could ask for, you know, playing in the mud, running around chasing chickens, and uh, <laughs> it, it was a really sweet time. I always had a green thumb growing up as well. And I, um, you know, I did go home every once in a while though, and I would, you know, I had two older brothers and they, they were much older than I, 10 and 15 years older than me. And, you know, we would rough house and whatnot. And it was, a, it was really a beautiful time. Uh, but then uh, something weird started happening in my childhood. I was having these experiences where I would start to communicate to things that I really I wouldn't know what they were unless I saw it on movies. Like, I would have been totally freaked out if I didn't see this happening on the movies. So, I was talking to spirits very, very early on in my life. And, um, you know, around five years of age, I had this experience uh, with one of my family members that um, corrupted me. I'm not going to go too much into that. Uh, but it really changed my life. Uh, for a period of six years, I, um, I was abused and I eventually figured out what was going on at age 11. And whenever I figured out what was going on, it was like this, this seeping cold feeling running through my veins. And from that moment forth, my parents, they did not know who I was. 
and I still never told anyone uh, about this instance until I was a, a junior in high school. And so around 12 years of age, uh, a family member who, was, who played a very influential role uh, with me growing up, he passed away and within a week I was actually communicating with him and um, let's just say that the stuff we were talking about wasn't necessarily uh, very Christian and it actually led me to leave the church my sophomore year of high school and become atheist and around this time I started getting involved with uh, drugs like marijuana, drinking, uh, partying, and girlfriends and stuff like that. And I quickly went on the decline with my morality. And like I said, I left the Methodist church that I grew up in. And I became really just atheist at this point. And I couldn't, couldn't cope with the fact that God would allow something like this to happen in my childhood and nor could I compensate what happened um, with several of my family members and also I was taught evolution all throughout my you know high school junior high career so that to me disproved the creation account so I just went on and thought myself almost an animal and my senior year came around and I started getting into harder drugs like LSD uh, and also hallucinogenic mushrooms and many other drugs and I started having these reoccurring experiences that I had early in my childhood where I would be communicating with some being that was outside of myself and I started having experiences that really showed me that there was something more than what meets the eye, I guess you could say. So, my senior year after I graduated, I started getting into Hinduism, uh, studying things about meditation, and also uh, studying into Buddhism and even shamanism and I started getting into things such as astral projection and um, basic new age practices, rituals and I started coming up with this vain philosophy of um, becoming my own god and which roots way back to the first deception that Satan told Adam and Eve is you shall become as gods and that's basically what's being promoted in most of the movies that we're watching today and also with just the media that we're absorbed in and it's very new agey um, so I had a lot of experiences with spirits at this point and I was actually led into the occult and I I guess it's hereditary to go off into this stuff because over generations of my grandfathers and grandparents they all got into uh, some form of spiritualism um, not all of them but most of them I had a grandfather who was in uh, the 32nd degree of the Freemasons and the Fort Worth Masonic Lodge. And so I went pretty full force into the occult whenever I got into college. And, and I did my fair amount of research and to this stuff and I saw a lot of truth behind it but little did I know there was so much error in it. And I learned more about demonology, I guess you would call it. So I actually made contact 
with uh, these demons. And little did I know, I was already talking to them before, but this time I was primed and ready to go out and straight up talk to them. So I did a ritual where I uh, contacted one of these demons and um, later that night he showed up at the foot of my bed and from that moment forth uh, until I found God, me and him were in communion with each other and I would ask him questions about the surrounding world and why things were the light, why they were. And he would tell me some very interesting uh, answers. Uh, like whenever I was in college, I would notice that there would be people who would always act the same and I could almost get to where I could like predict what people were gonna say when they were gonna say it. And I was wondering like, why, why is this? I asked this demon this question and he started to introduce me to the New World Order, I guess you would call it a control system, um, satanic New World Order. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm trying to think of the proper word that would be less, um, <laughs> be less in your face, but more. Um, he started introducing me to the satanic control system of the world and how he and other demons use this system to put people in a subdued mindset. And he was tempting me with a lot of influence and a lot of power. And he showed me things that was going on in the media, uh, how they would use TVs to implant subliminal messages in people's minds. He would show me satanic influences in the music industry and really how influenceable uh, we are under music. He would also show me things like um, how the food we eat actually deadens our minds and makes us less uh, independent thinkers. And he was showing me all these things. And uh, one by one, I actually, I uh, went into veganism, which is highly promoted in the new age. I got rid of my TV. I started reading more books and not, not good Christian books, I might add, but they were, um, they were books like by Aleister Crowley and stuff like that and many other things he showed me. Um, I got into practices that were just um, evil. Um, but I eventually I got to the point where I realized that this control system, this subduing of the will of the masses, it, it became disgusting to me really. And I was being prodded to go further into the occult by doing uh, human sacrifices and stuff like that. But I, that's where I drew the line. Uh, praise God that he instilled morals in me within a young age to some degree or I would not be sitting here in this chair. And so I became so disgusted with this uh, system and I eventually tried to fight against the New World Order, satanic system, whatever you want to call it, with occultic practices that I've learned from them. And you hear the saying, fight fire with fire, and let's just say it, doesn't, it didn't work out. Um, I, instead of, you know, having friendship with these beings, or what I thought was a friendship, it became more of, uh, more direct attacks coming on me. And life was a living hell for about three, four, Honestly, I couldn't tell you how many months that it was. 
and it felt like a lifetime, really. So there would be nights where I would go to bed and there was just this darkness that would wash over me. Um, that would see, like you got a little fire in your soul, but that darkness just almost seems like it's about to put it out, like you're about to die just because of the darkness that's around you. And oh, it would, it would be terrible nights of torture. Um, and I would have, I'd be hanging out with friends and stuff. And mind you, we were sober during some of these instances and we would see beings um, that were so horrifying they would chill you to the bone. And I, at first, you know, I thought it was me hallucinating and I thought I was losing my mind. But the more I saw my friends see this, I knew that I was dabbling into stuff that was beyond my measure. Wow, Jace, how does God get this kid? Viewer, I wanna encourage you. If you or someone you know seems to have gone too far, they haven't. In John 3, 16, it says that God so loved so much that he gave his son, Jesus. You may feel that because of your past, God doesn't really like or even need you. When we want to know the value of something, all we have to do is see how much someone is willing to pay for it. That's right. You and Jace and everyone else are worth the investment of Jesus leaving his riches and dying so you don't have to. With how much God has invested in you already, it wouldn't make sense for him to disregard you now, right? Okay, Jace, how did God reach you? So, I'm, I'm sure you're wondering, how did God get to this kid? How did God save this kid who went too far in the wrong way? Well, I was in a relationship with a backslidden Christian girl and we never talked about God and uh, we were basically living together, really bad situation. Um, but one night it was after a day of just terrible torture, I basically told her, I'm helpless. I really, I don't know what to do at this point. I am completely at the mercies of whatever these beings are. And there's nothing keeping me from, you know, dying. And she told me something, first time she ever mentioned God, first time and last time, she said this one sentence, and this is what changed everything. She said, if we give our lives to God, then He will protect us. And mind you, I was in a self-preservation mindset at this point, so that was exactly what I needed to hear. And I was so familiar with the satanic side of things, and I was wondering this whole time, what is this what is this suppressing? Like so many people are in it already. What is, what's the point? Why? What's with the amount of control they're trying to enforce on people? And with that one sentence she told me, it all made sense that there were endless amount of control systems and terrible psychological warfare is going into play just to keep people from realizing who God is, really who He is, not what the pastor in the pulpit says He is, but to genuinely know who He is and what He's capable of. And it clicked, you know. In that moment, it became such a reality to me, how far I went in the wrong way and then, without hesitation, I ran over, opened up a Bible. I didn't know where to read. I was just pleading for God to show me something. And every verse my eyes fell upon, it was like a personal message to me. And I couldn't give you the verses right now. It was a very emotional state, but 
the gist of him was, you messed up. <laughs> you messed up a lot. And uh, you went a long way in the wrong way. But by his might and by his power, he's going to save me. And he told me to fear not. So I gave my life to him that night. And this was April 2nd of 2018, just about a year ago from this interview. And from that moment on, I started reading my Bible in the mornings every time I got a chance to at work. And at night, I would watch sermons all throughout the day, really just trying to know more about the Word of God. And luckily, two weeks later, after I had my conversion experience, God saw it fit to separate me and that girl from an illicit relationship. And at the time, I did not like it, believe me. It was, I was not happy about it. But I thank him so much today because I know if I was caught in that relationship that I would have been sucked down and I would have lost hope in my spiritual walk. And so, from April 2nd, 2018 to April 15th, I was really studying. I was led into the Church of Christ, learning more and more about the Bible. And, you know, I, at one point I was going to four different churches in a seven day week and really just trying to get as much as I can possibly know about the Bible. And it's really beautiful. Um, I was baptized April 15th in the Church of Christ. And a few days before or after I was baptized, I, God was really working on my heart and He changed my desire in music and so I was just scanning through the radio. I didn't want to listen to the same rap that I've been listening to my whole life. So I was scanning through the radio station and I landed on 89.1, uh, 3ABN. And wow. Um, they, I immediately noticed that there was something different about this radio station because they were playing hymns instead of the regular old, you know, Christian rock and uh, they were answering questions that I personally had about the Bible. And ever since I was a little child, I had a very inquisitive mind and I was wondering, you know, what does the book of Revelations mean? And I was asking this question in the Methodist church for a long time. And, you know, they would tell me, oh, we'll do a Bible study on it. And uh, a few months go by and we finally do a Bible study on it. And what I glean from the Bible study is, basically, we don't know anything about the book of Revelations. So that didn't strengthen my faith that much in the Methodist church. But whenever I heard 3ABN talking about, you know, the beast of Revelations 13 and all the different prophecies, the trumpets, the seals, and showing how the book of Daniel actually unlocked the book of Revelations along with other parts of the Bible, I, I had some of the most genuine peace at that time, really knowing more about the Bible and knowing that this word that I had in my hands is true and having tangible evidence to see how prophecies in the Bible have been fulfilled. That was one of the most amazing things to me was the prophecies and I, um, I was still struggling with the mindset that was ingrained in me through my whole life um, especially whenever I got into the occult my perception on reality definitely warped and you know God is such a loving God that he doesn't just slap you with all the truth at once uh, if he would have done that to me, I think it would have done more harm than good. Instead, he slowly introduced me to uh, corrections and he changed my mindset from where it was. Um, 
You know, I told you about how I thought myself as a God to be, but instead God ironed me out so much that I'm able to know that He is a true and only God. And He has given me contentment about that as well, just becoming a son of God. And that's, that's perfect. I, he is um, truly, I could go on about, about God, but we'd be here for a while. Um, so, as I was listening to 3ABN, I listened to it for about two weeks, and then they mentioned the Sabbath truth. And at this point, it took me a solid 30 seconds to realize, yep, the Sabbath is on Saturday. There wasn't a doubt in my mind. And the Sabbath was actually approaching whenever I heard that truth. So I got prepared. Friday night came. And it's so funny. I actually spent my first Sabbath with my baptismal robe I got from the Church of Christ on this big long white robe and I was uh, reading the book of Matthew through the whole day and I I just remember God's presence coming so close to me and giving me such peace I that was the first time I really experienced peace that I that just passes all understanding and I was so excited about it, I had to tell my parents about it the next day. And so Sunday came around, I came over to my parents' house and, you know, basic chit chat, but then I, I was like, did you know that we're supposed to keep the Sabbath on Saturday? And it's in the Ten Commandments and everything? And they said, oh yeah, that's what the Seventh-day Adventists believe. And I, I've never heard of Seventh-day Adventists before. And I was like, the, the who? Who? <laughs> and they told me that uh, we, they had a church just right next to the grocery store in this small little town of Heiko. And I just took a mental note and I said, hmm, all right, I'll check it out. And so the next Sabbath came by and I walked into the Seventh-day Adventist Church and just to give you a mental picture of what I looked like then my hair was down to my shoulders my beard was down to the bottom of my neck I was wearing a ragged t-shirt blown out jeans and uh, Pink Floyd uh, penny loafers <laughs> and you know, there was no judgment cast on me. I, I felt like uh, like the prodigal son whenever he came into his father's house and he was embraced just so lovingly. Um, I had the same experience, really. I guess everyone was so excited to see a young person coming through the church. And um, I was welcomed right in and I was invited to potluck, but I actually didn't know if they were vegan, so I did not stay for potluck, but I thanked them for the offer and I went on about my day. And then I, my, my blessed adopted grandfather, Arthur Sagerbill, he uh, got my contact information and then that Wednesday, he wanted to talk to me, so uh, we talked and really just about what Adventists believe and what what's going on in the church, I guess you could say. And then I was very, very satisfied where God led me. So not only has God saved Jace from his sketchy past, but as he is growing and understanding and obeying God, God has a special purpose for him. You may feel that you are stuck or that things aren't moving, that your plans don't seem to be working out. During these times, God is working. 
Sometimes he brings things about that you could have never planned because they are beyond your knowledge. Viewer, I want to encourage you, keep trusting in God. He is such a way maker. I actually told Arthur my testimony and he's like, all right, I know who you need to watch. So we watched Walter Weiss' Total Onslaught series. If you or a loved one that you know uh, is struggling with some of the stuff that I was struggling with um, and need some kind of help in that aspect and knowing what's going on and why it is the way it is, um, Watch Walter Weiss' Total Onslaught series. That is, that was a beautiful series, and you can look it up on YouTube for free. Uh, but I, I began to watch that at Arthur's place, and I tell you, the first video I watched of Walter Weiss' stuff, it was over the prophecies of the Old Testament about Jesus that were fulfilled in the New Testament. And I just, I was in awe because that was so much truth that I never heard before. Like it gave me more of a foundation to believe the Bible is truly the Word of God. And so I also uh, looked into resources of the church of showing how creation has more scientific proof than evolution and stuff of that nature really just helping me build my foundation on the Bible. and. So I began to attend the Adventist church for a good while, uh, about two months. And at the time I was working at a plant nursery and I, I realized that the moral influences that I, I was are surrounded by in the plant nursery was not gonna be good for my newborn experience. And I, was fighting against my language, also against uh, the lust of the eyes. And I had to flee. I really had to flee that area. I put my two weeks notice in on a Wednesday. And then that following Sabbath is, God's timing is always beautiful. That following Sabbath, a very, godly man came through with his family. His name is Kevin Powell, and he came to the church in Heiko and started telling me about this wonderful college. And I was into college before, and one of the things that that spirit told me about whenever I was in communion with him, uh, he told me about how the education system was pretty much hardwired to sap the individual thought out of you. So I dropped out of college about, a, about eight months before this, but I was really interested in finding a college that taught the Bible, that taught organic agriculture, that taught trades and um, so God led Kevin Powell to the church and they, his family started to show me promotional videos for Washita Hills College in Amity, Arkansas. And I was just blown away because of God's timing, but also the fact that he answered my prayers. And I fell in love with Washita at that moment at that day and then two days later I applied and then two weeks later I started to do canvassing work with the Washita program and they go all over the states if you want to see the world that's the best way to do it and you know to also do God's work at the same time I w went to North Carolina where I met some amazing people and it was exactly what I needed as a newborn Christian to grow spiritually. And mind you, I, I knew a little bit about the Bible at this point. I, I wanna say that I wasn't completely ignorant of spiritual truth, but 
You know, I wasn't near as strong as I thought I should be, but you know, I just walked out in faith and accepted God's invitation, trusting that He would grow me the way He needs to grow me. And so I had a wonderful time canvassing and uh, North Carolina for about three weeks. And then after those three weeks were up, I went to the college. And I remember driving up to the college and it's out in the country too. Uh, surrounded by pine trees. You roll down your window of your car and you just smell all the wonderful fragrances of the pine needles and the flowers and oh, it was a beautiful, beautiful experience. You're gonna hear me say that word beautiful a lot throughout this testimony because this is where it gets amazing. Um, so I got to the college and immediately I found godly young people who were dedicated to serving the Lord and who were a very good influence on me growing in Christ. And, you know, we're not all perfect there or anything, but, you know, we're all trying to serve the Lord and we're striving to do that there. And it's, of course, we're not all perfect. I gotta mention that. We all have our faults. And, you know, God, He really works on them. And He really builds our character there. And so I began my education at Washita Hills College. I just finished my first year there. And I have learned so much about the Bible, so much about the spirit of prophecy, and so much about just general manual labor. Um, and I have found friends that I know will be friends throughout all eternity. And right now I am actually studying uh, a multitude of things. I have my major in biblical studies and I have three minors, one in business, the other in social studies and medical missionary work. And um, I, I have a lot of interest whenever it comes to this, but yeah, God, I don't know where he's going to lead me uh, as a ministry. I might just be um, working as a farmer and spreading the gospel through my work, or he might have me as a, an evangelist. He might have me to start up a school like the one at Washita, or Really? I'm just laying my plans at his feet. And that is my advice for anyone is don't take your own plans into play. Believe me, I had a lot of aspirations. I wanted to rule the world, but just lay your plans at the Lord's feet and he will guide your life in ways that you would have never guessed. And it's not going to be easy. It's, it shouldn't be easy. If it's easy, you're doing something wrong. <laughs> Something's going wrong, but it is worth it. It's worth every prayer. It's worth every early morning with God. It's worth it all. And uh, so, yeah, that's my testimony. And I hope you're blessed by it. Yeah. And yeah, before I go, I would like to have a quick prayer with you. And if you would close your eyes, or if you're driving, just pray with me. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the trials that you have put me through. For I know that everything that I have went through in my life has been to glorify you and to be an encouragement for others. I also want to ask for forgiveness if there is anything that I have missed anything that I could have said better. I want to ask that you please uh, make the message heard anyways and open my heart as well as others' heart to receive your daily message for us all. 
And please give us your Holy Spirit to lead us into all truth and to grow us. And I want to thank you for all that you've given me. I want to thank you for the ways that you will lead and uh, your many ways that you will lead with the viewers who are listening. And I pray that every soul that hears this message, that they will be in awe and inspired by your miracle working power. And I pray that you just be with us through the rest of the day and prepare us for that time where you will come to bring us home. In Christ's name I pray, amen. All I can say is praise God. Did you just see how good God is? We need to see more and more the goodness of God. I want to encourage you to consider what God has done for you. As we reflect on His goodness in our own lives, it becomes more obvious the way He has been working. Jace mentioned some of the people that had a big impact in his life. I have reached out to a couple of them and asked them to give an account of their testimonies and interactions with Jace. The first one is a head elder at the Heiko, Texas Seventh-day Adventist Church, Arthur Sagabell. Following him is a faculty member and teacher at Washita Hills College, Kevin Powell. I asked Arthur what it was like for him to have Jace come through the door Sabbath morning and what his reaction was like. As you watch, you can see that a special bond has developed between the two of them. It was on a Sabbath day. <clears throat> Jace Addison walked into our church, actually sat down, didn't talk to anybody and went through the whole service with us. And then after the service, he came out and he was just elated that he had kept his first Sabbath. Well, he hadn't gone all the way through it yet, but he had kept his Sabbath to worship and he was just, just elated. And as we talked, uh, we brought him home out here to our little farm property and we visited all afternoon and uh, shared Doug Batchelor and Walter Fife and maybe some others, but entered, kind of introduced to some of the Adventists that we were watching at the time in 3 ABM. And he had apparently downloaded some of this stuff, but what got him to come to the church the first time <clears throat> was the radio station in Stephenville and he heard on the radio there about the Sabbath. And he was, he was living the life of so-called young people, just what everybody does, drink and drugs and sex, and it just, it just didn't feel right about it. There was something wrong. And so when he, when he came to the church, he had settled in his mind that he needed to change <clears throat> and that he, he was through with that life that he wanted he was open he was open to truth and that that's the one thing that going back to me is that I was looking for truth when I'm when I met Mary and she's one of the main reasons that I am Seventh-day Adventist but Jace was so elated he couldn't wait for the next year and he from then on till I guess he started school and I don't I don't know the timing of that um, he would be out here every Sabbath afternoon and spend the day with us and uh, then maybe after this happened I'm gonna say seven or eight Sabbaths the president from Washington Hill College was here visiting Mark De, 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 uh, Dubon. Dubon. Dubon, yeah, Dubon, who had gone to the college up there and he was visiting him. <clears throat> and of course they had a, a cute little daughter and so they became friends and first thing I knew he was signed up to go to college and just knocked the socks off of us, I guess. Of course, it, it, he didn't start right then, but it, when it came time to go to college, he went to college up there. And every time you talk to him, he just lifts you up, and he's so excited about learning the message and the health message and just, just everything. It's just been a blessing to, 
have something like that happen. And we've, we've communicated and helped him a little financially, but spiritually, maybe I hope as much as anybody has. And I don't, I don't think it was uh, evangelical uh, deal, uh, evangelist series at all. I think it was 3ABN Radio that t got him started. Now, we may, we may have had a, one of the programs gone. We've done so many that I don't, I, I honestly, off the top of my head, don't know which one it would have been. Could have been uh, Sean Boostra. What were the titles of those? I'm not good about remembering names. <clears throat> but yeah, he was he was hungry, and when when somebody's hungry, they will listen, they will hang. Uh, <clears throat> and my problem has probably been I try to beat people over the head with it. I don't, and I don't hit, hit, intend to do that, but it comes across that way when you cross somebody, and you teach them something different than what they know. It's like, oh, leave me alone, man. I don't need this. And so I've been accused of that, and it, it hurt my relationship to the Lord immensely for somebody to tell me that, because that was never my intent. My intent is to bring them to the truth. I love the truth. The, trust, the truth is beautiful. And there, most of my life, I didn't have the truth. I had the Bible. And we might, we, he he calls he calls probably every five or six weeks and uh, I tend not to call him too much. If he calls that much, I'm happy <clears throat> and we have a good conversation. A lot of times we get cut off because he's at school and somebody needs him or something wants something <laughs> and uh, that's good. He's, I said, here's a kid that's looking. With the, with the words that he had, with the clothes he had, you could tell his heart was different than where he'd been. He, you could tell there was a change. He had long hair, pretty much to the shoulders. <clears throat> and, and, and not, you know, like you said, yeah. He, w he was not dressed normally the way, he, and he's never come that way again. In fact, <clears throat> the first time he came out here, the second time he came out here, I gave him a pair of uh, navy blue slacks that I, and I think a, a khaki pair that something happened, they shrunk, and I couldn't get in them anymore. And so, yeah, we gave him those, and I gave him a blue blazer, and so he was ready to go. And uh, yeah, we've tried to help him every which way we can. Now, during, <clears throat> after some months, and I don't think it was so awful long, we baptized him in Stevensville. Uh, and we, all the baptisms we've done are either Stevensville or Ste uh, Cleburne, Joshua, I think, one. Uh, otherwise, they've been in the river, river or creek, which that's another deal. If we go through the whole thing, we, we have actually, I can remember, from, 14 baptisms, and <clears throat> only two of them are active at this point in our church. Now some have moved off and I'm not sure exactly, you know, where they are, if they're going to church or not. <clears throat> anyway, they, we have hired him and his friend to do call party work in Heiko. <clears throat> and we're, he's working with me right now on getting the books that we want, or he wants. And so that'll culminate. They're, they're planning to be here in middle of May, end of May. I think end of May probably. And then go the summer. He wants to do health programs. He, uh, what was the other? Medical missionary work and health deal that kind of goes together. And, and do some Bible studies. So he has covered he says about a quarter of the town. I think it's more like a, a sixth or a fifth, maybe, that he covered last year sometime in the midst of the pandemic. So he's, he's a worker, he's a goer, and he's just a blessing to have around. 
I'm so glad to be here with Jace today. Mm -hmm. uh, the Lord has blessed me in my relationship with Jace. I've enjoyed getting to know him, and it's been an encouragement in my life. And today, I just wanted to tell a little more of the story of how uh, things came about for us to meet down there in Heiko, Texas. And, and I wanted to ask a question at the beginning. Um, Jace, what is a coincidence? Mm, I'm not sure. What is it? <laughs> well, I like a definition that I heard one time. It says, a coincidence is God's way of remaining anonymous. Mm. Now, it really says that everything God works around and brings around in what we call providence to have the people that he's trying to lead and is leading to be at the right place at the right time. Mm. And I am thankful how God providentially brought us together in Heiko, Texas. So mm -hmm. I wanted to tell you a little bit of that, uh, of my side of that story. Um, I work at Washita Hills College. My name is Kevin Powell, and I'm the religion department chairman. And so I teach, and I'm also the advisor for the ministerial students. And we have a small school here out in the country, and we enjoy our students. We have good relationships with them. And after our, our students graduate and then leave to go into ministry uh, in different places, we often continue uh, relationships with them. And one of our graduates is Pastor Mark Dubon. And at the time that I met Jace, uh, he was pastoring in Heiko and two other places there in Texas. And it was around his 10th anniversary, and he, he asked if I could come and officiate in his uh, vow renewals. But it was going to be his 10th anniversary, and so he had asked if I would come and do his vows renewal, and I was happy to do so. And so we came down to spend the weekend with them, had the practice on Friday, and we were going to have the vows renewal on Sunday. And then it was like, well, what do we do on Sabbath? And I thought, man, I just want to go wherever Mark is, wherever he's in action. I want to be with Pastor Mark. And so he was going to be speaking and having a fellowship meal at Heiko, Texas Church that day. Mm -hmm. And that's where I met Jace. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was, it was neat to go there and to see uh, Pastor Mark in action, having had him in classes before and and then be able to see him there pastoring was really a, a neat experience for my wife and myself, and I think two of our children were there. And, um, and then it came time for the fellowship meal, and we were talking with different ones, and well, it was right before the fellowship meal, I think we were talking, mm -hmm. and, and uh, I just see this, this, this handsome, intellectual young man that's just bright-eyed and ready, ready for more. And uh, it was just neat to see that in, in Jace and how, and, and then as, as we, we talked longer and, and heard about that he had even already put in a, a two week, uh, uh, what was it? A, it was, um, oh, what do you say? Two weeks notice. He had already given his two week notice that he was going to end the job that he was in, but he didn't know what it was going to happen after that. And so I'm here, and I see Jace. He's just open for something better, something more, so mm -hmm. a, new, a new adventure with the Lord. And, and, and I saw that he was ready to learn. He was ready to grow. He was ready for an adventure. And, uh, and I told him about, uh, about the college, uh, Washington Hills College. I showed him the promo video, and he was pretty impressed. He yeah. was like, wow, a place like that exists? Yeah, it's an adventure. It's an adventure <laughs> for sure. <laughs> and then I, told, then I told you about uh, how uh, there was uh, going to be a canvassing program starting up. And mm -hmm. you didn't know anything about canvassing before that, right? No, I did some little literature evangelism, not understanding what canvassing uh, okay. was at all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so I introduced you to that, told you about it, and then I said, you know... You, you, you could really get a head start for the school and relationships and all and friendships in the, in the school by going to this canvassing program. Mm -hmm. And it was over in uh, Green, North Carolina? Uh, Greensboro, Miss, uh, no, North Carolina. Yeah, yeah Greensboro, North Carolina. Yeah, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. and, and it was so neat how, how God providentially brought it just at the right time. Mm -hmm. and, and you were ready and I was there uh, not thinking about meeting you. you, you weren't thinking about meeting me at church there, mm -hmm. and yet God put us uh, together at that time. Mm 
And it was neat to, to see and be a part of that. And you were ready to, to grow, ready to, to learn. And, and it was exciting to, uh, to, to see that and then be able to have something in my hand that I could, I could give as far as information and, and encouragement to go ahead, give it a try, Jace. Mm -hmm. And you were like, sure. Yeah, completely. <laughs> uh, you, and you had already prayed, Lord, where do you want me to go? Mm -hmm. And he providentially put that in place. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when we talk about things like this, uh, some, could, some could wonder, yeah, that's, that's for you. That's, that's how God leads Jace. But, mm -hmm. but me, on the other hand, it has to be a different way. But I am so thankful for a God who is not a respecter of persons. Amen. In fact, um, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, maybe you can share that one. Mm -hmm. It says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Amen. And he is so willing, so longs to direct our paths personally, like Amen. he has Jace, like he will continue to do for Jace. Amen. And uh, every one of us, uh, when we look back, can see wow, look how you put this at the right time for me here and, and how this came together. And it's just mainly to trust him first, trust him with all of our heart and then not lean on our own understanding. Like, I think I should do this instead of that. But instead say, Lord, help me to see your hand in this. And he mm -hmm. will show. And he says in Psalm 32, verse eight, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way that thou shalt go. And it says he would guide us with his eye so that tells me that God knows, he who knows the future can know what I need for the next step to get to that place for the future, as well as uh, he knows the places where there's potholes in that road and he can guide me around them or, or knows I better get a detour on this one mm -hmm. because the, the, the road's washed out. So mm -hmm. go around here and he with his eye can guide us. Amen. And I am just grateful for a God who, who leads Jace who leads each one of us directly and personally because he loves us and he longs to have us at the right place at the right time so he can use us to bless someone else. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to uh, just close with a, a word of prayer for all of you who are listening that you would experience by God's grace that guidance, that direction from him and that you can expect it from him, look to, look to him for it and find that he does answer prayer. Mm -hmm. So let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, I just thank you for your work in Jace's life. And I thank you for being a God who is not a respecter of persons, but who is willing to lead and guide and direct each one of us, knowing uh, what is ahead, knowing our past, knowing exactly what we need in the present, and being able to count on you to show us where to go and to know that you will providentially put us at the right places at the right time when someone else needs it or when we need it. So Lord, thank you for, for your guidance. Thank you for your willingness to instruct us and teach us and to do so from your loving perspective. So bless each one of us for this, and I thank you in Jesus' name, amen. amen.